Hello, may the Lord be with you today, January 26th. Today, you and I and the rest of the Christian church on earth are celebrating the festival of St. Titus. And this brings to a close our three-day rotation of festivals. You remember, on the 24th, we had St. Timothy. Yesterday, we had the festival of St. Paul's conversion. And today, we have St. Titus. And we have Timothy and Titus kind of bookending Paul because they were both converted by him. And what we know about Titus is a little bit less than Timothy. He only has one letter directed to him in the Bible, the book bearing his name, the book of Titus. But we hear about him a few times in Acts. He's referenced a few times in some of Paul's letters. But what we do know is that he was beloved by Paul, a close companion, a close missionary, uh, fellow missionary, and that he eventually returned to Crete after Paul's death, returned to his homeland of Crete, settled there, became a bishop in the church there, and then, just like Paul, just like Timothy, suffered a martyr's death for his confession, the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And then in a little bit more of what we have from him, you remember St. Timothy is often portrayed as young. Meanwhile, St. Titus is portrayed as being more elderly or older than Timothy, to put it in some nice... Uh, correct terms. He's an older man. And so we have bookending around Paul, the young pastor and the old pastor, representing the ones who are coming in and the ones who are building up those in the faith. And so Titus, we have in his book, and our text for today comes from his book, we have some of the guidelines for pastors, what pastors, shepherds of the flock are supposed to do. So let's turn today for that. Our reading comes from Titus chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. To Titus, my beloved, to Titus, my true child in a common faith, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. This is why I left you in Crete, so that you might put what remained into order and appoint elders in every town as I directed you. If anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination. For an overseer, as God's steward, must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or a violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instruction in sound doctrine, and also to rebuke those who contradict it. Here in that short reading from Paul to Titus, we have the outline of what pastors are supposed to do, how they are supposed to act, what are the qualifications. They have to be above reproach. Also, they have to be firm in the faith. They have to know the true doctrine and be able to teach it and contradict those who teach otherwise. This is a phrase that your pastor, that I in the seminary, that we hear all the time, that we contemplate a lot. Because it's a serious call to be a pastor in God's church, to serve as an under-shepherd under the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. And with that, please pray with me. Almighty God, you called Titus to the work of pastor and teacher. Make all shepherds of your flock diligent in preaching your holy word, so that the whole world may know the immeasurable riches of our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in with me today to, hear, to celebrate this festival of St. Titus. And thank you for tuning in for the last two days. These are all kind of one big group, so I appreciate that you took the time to listen to these videos. Our next video will be tomorrow, where we celebrate the festival of John Christosom. That's a big mouthful of a name, and I hope you tune in for that to hear what that name means and hear a little bit more about that. But I pray that the Lord blesses you and the rest of your day.